Hi everyone, Morgan here Whoa, with uh, wheat being in uh, low supply because of what's happening in the world. I wanted to tell you some alternatives to wheat. There are so many diff different types of plants that we can grind down into a flour. Wheat is not the only type of flour that we can use. People who are gluten free, you know what's up, right? So let's go ahead and talk about all these other different types of plants that you can find in the wild or you could even grow yourself that's not just wheat. Millet, mostly thought of as a staple grain in the developing world, millet isn't a substantial part of the American diet. While you can find it in health stores, most of the millet consumed in the U.S. is found in wild bird seed. You can find wild millet growing anywhere the birds happen to drop a few seeds. You can also sow it yourself if you so choose. Dock seeds. Wild dock is a rel relative of buckwheat and will produce massive crops of seed each year. It's considered incredibly invasive in many places and it can be hard to eradicate. So it might be nice for you to go find out a uh, wild dock and uh, if you need to grow it yourself, you probably can pretty easy. Lamb's quarter, one of the oldest grains eaten by humans. Wild quinoa, essentially, is mostly ignored these days. Most foragers know it is lamb's quarter or goose foot, and it's a delicious salad green similar to spinach when young. All allow those plants to mature, and they'll produce abundant crops of tiny black seeds, a bit smaller than modern cultivated quinoa. And that's what you're going to be grinding into flour. Plantain seeds. Well known as an edible weed, the low-growing herb plantain is usually harvested for its medicinal leaves, but they also produce seeds and they're easy to harvest in abundance for wild forage flower. Purslane thrives in hot, dry desert soil. So if you're in the desert, start sowing some purslane because this is a great uh, forage for uh, flower and you can get a lot of grain from it. Amaranth. Also known as pigweed, wild amaranth produces tiny edible seeds and tasty edible greens. Amaranth is actually cultivated in many parts of the world and um, you can eat it. There's also wild rice. Actually, there's quite a different few different types of wild rice. Few people have actually tasted authentic wild rice and the long black grains sold in grocery stores as wild rice are actually cultivated grains. It's not actually wild rice. True wild rice is um, a process which is pretty involved, but the result is one of the calorie-rich staples you can harvest from the wild. While most people try to get rid of crabgrass in America, in parts of Ap Africa, crabgrass is a staple grain and as a forage. It can produce a whopping 17 tons per acre. So be sure to cultivate some crabgrass seed uh, so you can get, grind that into flour. Ryegrass. Ryegrass is a typical cr cover crop, uh, but it could be great for um, wild grains um, to, uh, to do for flour. Mesquite pods. Like I said before, if you live in the American Southwest, mesquite pods can be ground down into flour, and I, that's one of my absolute favorites. There's wild nut flowers. There's all different types of nuts that you can grind down into flowers. Acorn flower. There's going to be chestnut flower. Hazelnut flower. There's butternuts, black walnut flower, wild hickories, pecans, beech nuts. There's all different types of nuts that you can um, grind down into flowers. Bark flowers. There's a whole bunch of bark flowers from trees. Did you know that? Did you know that bark can actually be ground down into a flower? Pine bark in particular, uh, the inner bark bulked out cultivates a flower to extend the harvest through the long winter. A lot of people in Scandinavia did this. So, you know, they've made bark cookies and bark bread. Uh, yeah, it's very popular. Birch bark, pine, birch, and then other types of bark flowers. Um, you could do the inner bark of um, maple trees. Linden tree cambium was used as historically as a wild forage flower. Pollen flower. Plant pollen is a high protein source of nutrition and micronutrients. While some plant pollens are used as flavoring, like wild fennel, others have a much milder taste and are a wild flower substitute. Pine pollen and cattail pollen are probably the most common types of pollen that can be made into flour.
root and rhizome flowers such as cattail rhizome flower, burdock root flower, unchoke flower, wild parsnip flower. There's also the yucca flower, which comes from the yucca root of the yucca. <laughs> and of course, I would be remiss to not to talk about oats and oat flower. Oat flower is a really top popular type of flower. Potato flour is also an option, but it's usually mixed with other types of flours. It's usually never used on its own, but what you could do is actually use just mashed potatoes to create breads as well. But again, there might be some special ways to use potatoes and potato flour along with a lot of this other stuff. You know, it's gonna be combined together, but I'll talk about that in just a second. As you can see, you don't have to rely on just wheat. I bet you, I bet you anything where you live, you have some type of wild grain around you that you don't even have to plant yourself. You only have to sow yourself. You could just go out and forage it, right? From the trees or the nuts or, or the plants, you know, you go and identify the plants, whatever, right? You don't even have to produce this stuff yourself. Now, if you like to, a lot of this stuff is super easy. You can get the seeds. You can just go get the seeds from the wild forage stuff, bring it home and then plant them yourself, right? Uh, or, or propagate or whatever you need to do. Um, there's all different types of flour. And then the next step that you're gonna be taking is working with these flowers. Some of these flowers you may need to mix together in order to get a proper consistency of a flower or proper rise or proper thickness or proper consistency or proper texture or whatever, right? So experiment with the flowers. You may need to grow two different types of flowers or find two different types of flowers um, or, you know, whatever, uh, a nut and an oat flower, whatever the case may be in order to get the right type of consistency. So look up recipes online, start printing out those recipes and start learning to actually um, use that flour. Oh, and lastly, don't forget a, a mill, some type of um, manual mill. I have uh, this mill right here and I am hoping to get this electric mill here soon. So, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so don't forget the mill in order to actually grind these grains down into a flour consistency. All right, so there's a lot more to it than just uh, identifying and, and picking the seeds and things like that. But it's definitely a really fun experiment to know that there's way more out there than wheat. So start experimenting and have some fun with, the, with all the different flowers of the world. <laughs> I will talk to you later. Conquer tomorrow by preparing today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.